One Zambia, One Nation. Good evening. You're now watching Zanis Menus with me, Ethel Chanda. We start with the headlines. Vice President Mutale Nalumango commends matcha girls for zero teenage pregnancies. Chadiza to receive maternity annexes. Dave's restructuring deal to accelerate economic growth. Plus sports too for fostering unity and discipline. The news in detail. Vice President Mutale Nalumango has commended Marcha Girls Secondary School for not recording teenage pregnancies in the past two years. Mrs. Nalumango says government is happy that the school is complementing government's efforts in fighting teenage pregnancies in schools. The Vice President said this through Southern Province Deputy Permanent Secretary Yolanta Malunga during the Golden Jubilee celebrations for Marcha Girls Secondary School. Kostak Mudenga has more in the following report. Opened in 1906, Marcha Girls Secondary School has this year celebrated 50 years of its existence. The school, which is under the auspices of Brethren in Christ Church, is among the schools in Southern Province providing spiritual and quality education to the learners. For the past two years, the school has not recorded child marriage and teen pregnancies. You have crowned this with morally upright behavior where the schools have has not recorded any aid pregnancies and early marriages in the past two years. The church has not only played a crucial role in education, the Brethren Christ Church is contributing to research, humanitarian, ministry, and economic empowerment programs in its catchment areas. The authorities are elated with the school's efforts. Guest of honor, Macha Gale Secondary School has continued to uphold the high moral standards by both teachers and learners. The church has not only helped this community in terms of education, they are, they are in research, they are in health. We thank you. The church pledged to continue upholding both spiritual and standard education to the learners. Over the years, the school has established and distinguished herself as a renowned educational institute through imparting uh, not only academic knowledge, but also spiritual and moral enlightenment uh, into the learners. With your good policy on education, as a church through Matthias Secondary School, we pledge to continue to be among the best performing schools in the national examinations. At the same event, the school alumni donated a 50,000 kwacha to the school. Costa Timdenda, Zanis, in Joma District, Southern Province. And Unify Financial Lending Institution has donated buckets of pens and other painting materials to Luena Barracks Secondary School in Kauma District. Kauma Branch Manager Lester Lukungo says the move is meant to bring about a clean learning environment for the pupils. We have more in this report. Unify Financial Lending Institution has donated a number of painting materials worth 10,000 kwacha to Luena Barracks Secondary School. Unify Kauma Branch Manager Lister Lukunga says Unify is not only dedicated to making lives easy to their clients, but also prioritizes corporate social responsibilities. As Unify, we do not just pride ourselves in making life easy for our clients. We are also dedicated to giving back to our community as we, we highly prioritize corporate social responsibility. We are happy to sponsor the painting of Luena Barrett. Education is the key to success, and every child deserves to learn in a conducive, beautiful environment. Luena Barak Secondary School head teacher is happy with the kind gesture by Unify and has promised that work will start in two weeks' time. Uh, I'd like to appreciate the gesture that has been shown to our school by Unify Financial Services. We've already been uh, looking forward to this after we made the request some time back. It has been uh, some time ever since the school was painted. I would like to assure you also that uh, the, the painting will be done through the help of our military counterparts. I'm going to engage 
the battalion commander, five infantry battalion, Lieutenant Kene Oyula, to help me with the manpower from the engineering department. Pupils also cannot play a deaf ear to the guest job by Unify. I would like to appreciate Unify organization for their support to our school by providing us and donating art materials and equipments that are to shape our artists out there in society. This program has come to our school and not only is it for our school. This donation urged the first one given to Kashokoto Primary School where they were empowered with 15 desks by Unify. Clarence Chuaya, reporting for Zanis, Kaoma District of Western Province. More in education news. An education activist, Maya Mwansa, has donated early childhood teaching materials worth 10,000 kwacha to Chipongwe Primary School in Kafue District. The donated items include classroom tables and chairs, animated mats and toys for the learners. Details are in the following report by Naomi Piri. Education activist Mia Mansa has donated teaching materials worth 10,000 kwacha to Chipongwe Primary School in Kafiwe District. The donated items include classroom plastic tables and chairs, animated mats and toys for the learners. Speaking during the handover, Ms. Mwansa, who is also a resident of Chipongwe area, expressed happiness that Chipongwe Primary School has enrolled the first nursery section this year. I would like to thank the new Don government for the introduction of free education. And I hope the children at this school will make use of the donated items, which were worth about 10,000 kwacha. And I hope to continue working with the community and the government as an education activist to advocate for good and Kafir District Commissioner says the government appreciates homegrown solutions. You know, many times when we hear of a donation, we think of a Muzungu coming here to donate. But this is a homegrown idea, concept, that very few people are doing. So again, we are so appreciative of what we have done to our school. The government supports homegrown ideas like this one. We should not always expect donors from foreign countries. School representative Lapnes Muyumbwe thanked Ms. Mwansa for the gesture. Most importantly, may I express my gratitude to our donors who have gone out of their way to support our school. We are really grateful for your donation. Meanwhile, Headman Chipongwe urged the school to safeguard the donated items. When the preschool so we want to is that standiza, makamaka to encourage man of us to pay the puti, babuere pano mapaki. Reporting, I'm not clear. Meanwhile, Ministry of Information and Media Director Spokesperson Henry Kapata says the use of the Constituents Development Funds (CDF) should be appreciated as it is improving lives of the people in Mazabuka and other districts in the country. Mr. Kapata, who visited several CDF projects and beneficiaries under skills and bursaries to appreciate the implementation of the programs, says people should not doubt the impact of CDF in bringing development to communities. Details in the following report. The use of CDF in improving lives of the people has been well appreciated in Mazabuka district. Through CDF, some small and medium business entrepreneurs have acquired skills which they are saying is benefiting them greatly. Ministry of Information and Media Director Henry Kapata met with some beneficiaries. Because all I wanted was to have a paper. So I'm telling you, ever since I went to Labors, my life has changed. I've been exposed. CDF is real. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that people maybe do not have the information or they just don't know how to go about it. Otherwise, CDF is real. It is a real life-changing program. 
Uh, Mr. Hagaine Chilema, we really love you and really appreciate for the job you have done to, uh, to the people of Zambia. Yes, to empower us. We really appreciate. Thank you very much. Some beneficiaries from the bazaaries component have gone into different saw businesses and some turned into employers. Mr. Kapata explains the meaning of CDF to the people. You can see that uh, CDF means well. The president is very passionate about it, and I'm sure this is what government wants to see. You know, we have two classrooms that will be able to take out the challenges that the young people are having, learning on the floor. The, the environment is not conducive, people are praying, people are learning. I think there's less concentration on the youngsters. So this indeed is a game changer, and this is what we call CDF obviously being utilized to the maximum. Government, through Mazapuka District Commissioner Oliver Mulomba and Town Clerk Judith Mukwita, state that the district has improved using CDF. Because we are aware that some people ignorantly so, who haven't seen anything under new dawn. Even when the road they are passing, they are using, it has been turned under new dawn. They can't see it. Even when their pupils are going free for to school, they can't see that. A lot of projects have been there. Currently, CDF stands at 30.6 million kwacha per constituents. Kazala Yabwanda Zanis in Mazabuka district of Southern Province. We continue with the news. Chadiza Town Council has so far invested 1.6 million kwacha towards the construction of three maternity annexes in the district. Here is a report. This is Chairman Dala Health Post in Chadiza district with a catchment population of over 30 villages accessing health services here. Currently, authorities here are finding it difficult to render quality maternal health services to the community due to inadequate infrastructure with only one delivery bed. This has resulted in many expectant mothers delivering at home. So here we have got a high number of home deliveries due to lack of maternity annex. The labor room is just demarcated using a board from the main ward. Kuboma is almost 16 kilometers. Manje 16 kilometers upeza tiwa nyamula manjinga. Penango, manjinga ya waponche era munjira ni kupapira pa, 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 pa road. But now the local authority has constructed a maternity annex under the 2023 Constituents Development Fund CDF to address this challenge. We have so far done uh, three maternity annexes at a cost of 1.6 million kwacha. 1.6 million kwacha. As we do the annexes, we're also putting up uh, staff houses for schools as well as health. The construction of this infrastructure has excited women of Shamandala. As a man, so I am making a guambi. Manya, so the quality is be paku papa. Tinali kufuti kubela kuchipata la popesa we na alurembe samate ndoe siana siana. Koma mzima ya pesa kwa duala funa upapa. Chikala chofu, chikala chofu, chikala chofu, uta, kutiti masuke, kuti dogota, kutita duala, tipimi. Popeza, ukamba ukuwa kuja, wena amaseka, kutuwa dinchani, chilu chitika. Pona zotero msimai, ama chita manyasi, ubera ntao igali, kwa atiko makudi. Kuka atanka pesa kwa dogota, laliko woka. Koma lomba, tizambo kala ntuwa masuka, ubera kuchipata ntao iliose, chifukwa, chama teneti, wadi. Lubasi mtafela. Zanis, Chadiza District, Eastern Province. Musonweji Ward, councillor in Mufumba District, Hagai, Kenya, says plans are underway to work on the bridge across Musonweji River to enable people access health services, among others. Details in this report. Zambia Flying Doctor Service to reach every patient, even the remotest parts of Zambia, has been countered by challenges. Here, the team in Mufumbo is unable to cross over to Musonwege area to provide health services due to the absence of a bridge. The situation has displeased the residents who have opted to access the service 
at the nearest Kawipo Rural Health Center. We have suffered as Msonoji residents due to the lack of a bridge. Even as we speak, the Zambia Flying Doctor Service has failed to cross over to provide the service. Nevertheless, all hope is not lost for the residents as plans are underway to work on the road. We applied to the CDFC committee over the road so that they can work on the road. But we were promised that the road will be worked on this year. We are planning to make the bridges, like though we are promised that the acro bridges from Solid River and Dongwe River, they are in Rusaka. We are just waiting for money for installation so that they can be installed from Rusaka to here so that they can be put at the crossing point that we usually cross here in Musonid River and Dongwe River. Meanwhile, the services offered by the Zambia Flying Doctor at Kabipu Rural Health Center are appreciated. I've come here in Kabipu to be distracted by tooth which was disturbing me and the, the way you can hear I'm even failing to speak. So Zambia Flying Doctor, they have really, really helped me. Yeah, they've really helped our clients and the community at large. With their coming here, at least uh, we saw some people who are, whose teeth were distracted and also all the eye problems were attended to. Reporting for the news in Mufumbwe district, Jennifer Mtoshi. In our business news, Chambeshi Water Supply and Sanitation Council Managing Director Lakson Simumba says non-revenue water has increased and stands at 38%. Mutale Kani filed in this report. Non-revenue water has continued to be a challenge among commercial utilities. Non-revenue water is simply water that has been produced and is lost before it reaches the customer. Just like other commercial utilities, Chambeshi Water Supply and Sanitation Company, which services Northern and Muchinga provinces, is no stranger to non-revenue water. In the 2022 Water Sector Report, the water utility's non-revenue water stood at 38%, which is higher than the 30% target as per strategic plan. The commercial utilities managing director fears it could get worse owing to billing challenges when the new sector report is announced in April. As you discover that you have, say, about 42,000 customers under Chandesh Road, yes. the question is, are we reading all the 42,000 properties in terms of meters? Now, if you skip even 5,000, you haven't read, those become now what you call inactive accounts and zero consumption. So when you do your computation of the efficiency of Bernard, Apu and others, you discover that uh, there is a portion of uh, customers that you have not uh, accounted for. Water Sector Regulator National Water Supply and Sanitation Council, NWASCO, is working tirelessly with stakeholders to solve the issue with non-revenue water for the entire sector currently standing at above 50 percent. We are happy as a regulator of water supply and sanitation services in the country that our ministry, the Ministry of Water Development and Sanitation, um, launched uh, an important policy document that is called the National Non-Revenue Water Management Strategy. This strategy speaks into collaboration amongst different stakeholders on how we can work together towards reducing non-revenue water. So we do know that the ministry is leading this process, but of course the different stakeholders in the sector are working closely to ensure that we make a difference and reduce um, the non-revenue water that continues to challenge the sector. It is the hope of many stakeholders that the issue of non-revenue water is quickly addressed so that commercial utilities can start benefiting fully from the much-needed financial resources from customers. Mtala Kani for Zanis News in Lusaka. The Civil Servants and Allied Workers Union of Zambia says Zambia's agreement with Eurobond holders on the terms of debt restructuring is critical to restoring the country's debt sustainability. General Secretary Makai Makai has told Zanis in an interview that the date agreement will help Zambia attract new investments, accelerate growth, generate jobs, and respond to other national priorities. 
Mr. Makai says the country is likely to accrue benefits following the date restructuring agreement. He also says with reduced servicing costs, government will be able to allocate more resources towards other sectors of the economy, leading to increased production and supply, thereby containing inflationary pressures and maintaining price stability. Zambia's date restructuring means reducing the debt servicing obligations and extending the repayment period on favorable interest rates and limiting annual principal repayments. What therefore are the benefits of this issue of debt restructuring? One, the first benefit has to do with Zambia's sovereign rating. A country's sovereign rating plays a crucial role in the global financial landscape and holds significant importance for various stakeholders, including governments, investors, financial institutions, and businesses. The sovereign rating indicates a country's credit worthiness and the ability to meet its financial obligations. Uh, reducing the debt servicing obligations alleviates pressure on the country's foreign reserves and stabilizes the exchange rate. That debt restructuring will have positive effects on inflation. To instill confidence in the economy and create a favorable environment for investment, uh, the debt restructuring will uplift Zambia's fiscal stance. By utilizing these funds coming from the reduced debt servicing obligations, there is great potential to generate significant social economic benefits. So it is every government's desire that they create more jobs for the citizens. And when more jobs are created for the citizens, it improves the livelihoods of the citizens. As a union, let me also take this opportunity to challenge the politicians and to advise them at the same time. Because what we are seeing in Zambia is politics of just arguments, politics of insults, politics of, of condemning everything that those in the power are doing. For us, we feel it is not right. Our humble appeal to the politicians is when your friend who is in government does a good thing which benefits the citizens, who you also aspire to come and lead when you take over office, can you learn to stand up and clap for them? Still in business news, Chief Nkula of Chinsali District in Muchinga Province has commended government for attaining a deal to restructure $3.5 United States billion with the Eurobond holders. He says the continuous debt restructuring deals being reached by President Hainde Hichlema and his administration is a step in the right direction as it gives hope that things will be better soon. The chief said this when Permanent Secretary for Special Duties at Cabinet Office, Patrick Mcheleka, called on him. Miren Kumwenda now reports. Senior Chief Nkula of the Bemba people in Chinsali district of Mchinga province has expressed delight over the recent debt restructuring deal. The traditional leader was speaking when Permanent Secretary for Special Duties at Cabinet Office, Patrick Mcheleka, in the company of Mchinga province Permanent Secretary Henry Mukongule, paid a kete score on him to explain on various economical issues. We are so delighted that uh, we have reached that far. And we are optimistic that uh, things will start changing. Mm -hmm. Though it will be gradual, mm -hmm. but we are optimistic that uh, one day we will reach there. Even heat picking. It took time. Yeah, it took it didn't time. just come that very day no. and we reached the no, no, no. completion. It's important that uh, you have taken up that step to sensitize our people. They understand where we are coming from and where we are. And where we are going, mm. these people you are seeing in these villages, they are the very people that require this information. Mm. Because even in them, when you say debt restructuring, to them they don't understand it. Mm. Or they will think, ah, but if they have restructured, why are we, are we still suffering? Ah, why are we still suffering? Earlier, the two permanent secretaries took turns to explain. Also affecting us is certainly when you look at the geopolitical conflicts and then the, the high cost of living at global level, it is threatening, if anything, international security. And indeed, the, 
homeland security in most of the countries. Because the doom sawyers have taken advantage of that because they think that our people have no access to information. So they're churning out a lot of propaganda based on falsehoods to try and mislead the uh, people who they think uh, have no access to, to information. We had where our official creditors had actually agreed to actually cancel some of the interest and uh, some of the monies as well. So we are now able to, to breathe. Again, we had, because of the credibility, that we managed again to have investors to come and invest in mining. So we have Mopani now uh, back on its feet. Miriam Kumwenda reporting for Zanis in Chinsali, Uchinga province. Lastly, in business news, the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries in Chipata District has trained over 3,000 farmers in hay making. The hay will be used to feed livestock during the drought period. District Livestock Technician Ani Mutengo says the hay is prepared using natural grass as well as crops which have not done well as a result of the drought. Details in this report. The drought experienced in Chipata district has led to many crops not doing fine. Farmers are greatly affected and do not know what to do in order to feed their livestock looking at a dry spell encountered. In this regard, the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries in Chipata district is encouraging farmers to make hay that can be used to feed livestock during this drought. We all know that there is drought this year, so our, our livestock is going to be affected. So we are kindly asking or telling farmers that they should they should prepare for the for their animals or for livestock such as cattle, goats and other small livestock. So we are encouraging farmers to make a bills using the natural grasses and those that have planted the pastures that we are given, for example Napia grass roads, grass, velvet beans, they can come up and make sign each day. And the Department of Livestock has outlined this engagement with the farmers in the district by training them on how to make hay. Um, our message to the farmers out there is, um, well, it's evident that this year we are affected by the drought situation. A lot of districts did not receive as much the rainfall as we had anticipated. Um, not only are the crops affected, but uh, livestock as well. And uh, coming from the livestock department ourselves, we are encouraging our farmers to keep whatever crops did not perform well. You know, you can salvage um, that crop, make hay or silage out of it, and keep it for you know, a dry season feeding of your, life, your livestock. Um, in case you need to be trained on how to make the hay and silage, you can always reach out to our you know, district staff in the various districts across the province who will be able to you know, uh, give you the much needed extension services in that regard. Um, apart from that, as a department, we, are also, we also did provide uh, a number of uh, you know, legume as well as grass seeds that uh, were planted across the province. And some of these have done quite well compared to you know, crops like maize and uh, others. So what we're now doing is going flat out as a department to uh, train the farmers that did the, the, the planting to make silage and hay as well. But also we are um, about to go into a season where we hold few days and agricultural shows. So we use um, such platforms to also reach out to uh, more farmers out there. Rest of Shimba for Zanis in Chipata district. In other news, civil servants and Allied Workers Union of Zambia General Secretary Makai Makai has called for the harmonization of the pension administration for public service workers under the National Pension Scheme Authority and Public Service Pensions Fund. Details in the following report. As one ages, their vulnerability levels increase, either in terms of health or economically. The Civil Servants Allied Workers Union of Zambia, SAWUS, is concerned about public workers' vulnerability in retirement. Government workers 
are employees of one government, the government of the Republic of Zambia. And as such, they serve under the same conditions, the terms and conditions of service. Unfortunately, they are treated differently when it comes to pension administration. Those who were employed before 2000, they contribute to the Public Service Pensions Fund. And those who were employed after February 2000, they contribute to the National Pension Scheme Authority. And according to our analysis, we have observed and realized that those contributing to the Public Service Pensions Fund are treated far much better than those contributing to the National Pension Scheme Authority. Why? This is because the two schemes are different. I mean, today is budgeting a lot of money towards social cash transfer because the people are, 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 are struggling and people are suffering in old age. He also made some appeals to government. Our humble appeal is that the, the current government should quicken the process of harmonizing these two pension schemes. We want to call upon government to one, either give workers an opportunity or a chance to choose where to belong to so that they are able to determine their life in retirement. Secondly, the other option is either to create another pension scheme specifically for civil servants so that in civil servants they also contribute to two pension schemes so that when they retire, they get something from NAPSA and they also get something from that other scheme. We are seeing it and we have seen it with the, the granted institutions. A good example is NAPSA itself. Shilika Chabalengula, Fozanis, in Lusaka. In sports, Minister of Education Douglas Saganima says sports is a powerful tool for fostering unity, discipline and a spirit of competition that are vital for individual development and the development of the nation. Mr. Siakalima says through sports, individuals learn valuable skills such as teamwork, resilience and determination that are essential for, un for on and off the field success. He said this when he officially opened the Zambia University Sports Association Open Ball Games at Mlungushi University in Kapirimposhi District of Central Province. Take a look. 1,400 students from universities and colleges have gathered at Mungushi University for the Zambia University Sports Association Open Ball Games. Minister of Education Douglas Yakalima graced the opening and acknowledged the immense potential of sports in shaping the future of the nation. Sports has always been a powerful tool for fostering unity, self-discipline, and a spirit of competition. Through sports, individuals learn invaluable life skills such as teamwork, resilience, and determination. And Murungushi University Vice Chancellor, Dr. Chancellor Chumba, says sports fosters a culture of sustainability and responsible citizenship. We are not only committed to nurturing academic excellence, but we also foster a culture of sustainability and responsible citizenship. Meanwhile, Zambia University Sports Association President John Munkombe has appealed to the government to create a department dedicated to sports and recreation at every college and university. But in all the universities, there should be departments dedicated in the promotion of sports and recreation. The ball games are being held under the theme Unity in Diversity, celebrating athletic excellence. Daniel Billy for the next news in Kapirimposhi District, Central Province. Finally, in sports news, Elite Community Cricket Academy Senior Coach Saidi Malama says the Ministry of Youth, Sport and Arts has started working on the formation of a new cricket union. More in the following report. Elite Community Cricket Academy Senior Coach Sahid Malama says working without a cricket union has been challenging as the academy has been operating without... Yes, when it comes to financially, you can't do without it. But with the passion I have and few friends who trust me, and we are running this academy, you can coach the children, you can coach them the best way you can, 
but end of the day they need to compete, they need to travel, they need to be fed, they need uniform, they need equipment, all that we need finances. However, Malama has shared his excitement that the government and the National Sports Council of Zambia have initiated the formation of a new cricket union. I'm very happy with our government and National Sports Council in particular, who have been guiding us through and through how we can bring the board back into position. As you know, the past six years, uh, the board hasn't been existing because one of two things in the previous executive of Zambia. Meanwhile, elite community cricket academy men's captain Shadrick Malama says the introduction of a new cricket league in Zambia has encouraged more players to join the sport. It's not been an easy journey. We've been through ups and down as a captain. We go through a lot, and uh, cricket is a good game as usual. You know. uh, it has given me a lot of exposure as a club, and uh, we look forward uh, as it comes in so that we can play cricket at an international level. First of all, we would like to have more sponsors. Maybe they can assist us with some uh, equipment and uh, other stuff. And I'm uh, looking forward to participate in uh, national level. Esther Mwale reporting for Zeni Sports, Lusaka. On that note, but before we go, a recap of the headlines. Vice President Mutale Nalumango commends Macha Girls for zero teenage pregnancies. Chadiza to receive maternity annexes. Dave's restructuring deal to accelerate economic growth. Plus sports, tool for fostering unity and discipline. Thank you so much for watching Zanis News. I'm Ethel Chanda. Stay tuned for more exciting programs.